what I would like to take you all that um, how journey one can start being from any discipline. When we talk about any discipline, uh, the most important uh, thing comes in my mind that uh, uh, artist turns to be Nobel Prize in uh, medicine and physiology. It was a very beautiful uh, story about um, uh, one of the, the greatest um, scientists in neuroscience that we talk about, the Cahal, that um, he was a very rebellion teenager and his father was not very happy with him. And he asked him that to go and do the shoe making and the job of barber. So he started that uh, doing uh, repair of shoes and then working in salon to, to do the hair cutting and all these things. Then slowly and slowly he decided that I will become an artist. And that was his passion. And he was so good in visual aesthetics that he, whatever the design he made, either drawing he did at that time, it has become the hallmark for the future in scientific activity. So anything you talk about the frontal cortex, either you talk about neuronal networking, either you talk about any neurons, either punch that, how they fire it, that was designed and uh, developed by uh, the, the none less than the Kazal that at that time, he, he, he drew the structures and uh, design and all these uh, fine arts that we talk about. The finally, um, uh, to fulfill the dream of his father, he pursued the medicine. And again, he was the topper in his, his college to, to get the one of the best, uh, you know, the uh, student in the medicine. And it's not only that he was just such a great philosopher doing a lot of his sports, uh, always, you know, ready to help to anyone. And that was his character at that time. So anyone that who is pursuing any uh, uh, discipline of social sciences and natural sciences is very important to, 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 to pursue with them really um, great N2 and a drive should be in such a way that you should be very solidarity, not that you are very shy in nature. And then finally, he became the one of the best doctor. He went to the Cuba. And after that, when he returned from the Cuba, he was suffering from malaria and then he, he took his last breath. So um, you just look at these two guys that always I admire them to seeing that the Golgi and uh, Hazel, they, they really fetched the Nobel Prize at that time. And then you can imagine that his career started with the, making the shoes and being a barber. So I really, all credit goes to, to the, this type of students. And then finally, they turn to be a very nice teacher, either wonderful teacher. They take us to, to a domain where you can really learn from them, from their, their biography. So I suggest that whosoever is pursuing in, in any type of any discipline of the uh, natural sciences, either in uh, social sciences, either humanities, they should certainly read all this, that whatever they have done and then how nervous system and everything function about this. So just look at these two uh, diagram that I have put for both of you and uh, to all of you online that is um, uh, attending the classes, either the person who is coordinating it. This is the hallmark that how neurons they are connected to each other. The design that was made such a long time period and that is still the textbook. So, so imagine that what he was doing and how neurons today fires and then every nervous system, including from retina to hippocampus is so nicely controlled. So this is the beauty about these uh, uh, two gentlemen and, uh, and the, from where life and discovery starts and then people, they start working on this one. I put this uh, uh, slide to know that uh, whatever uh, we try to see uh, from outside, either we, what we try to see inside, that what is happening. And that just look at this, the book that always we uh, refer about that species spanning approach to medicine, that what we select and to say that it mimics that what we are going to do it. I have put this slide, either this cartoon in front of all of you is that we learn from this cartoon. We learn from these uh, slides that we have uh, uh, displayed here. Why 
I have put this slide for all of you is that uh, Barbara and Eterson at that time in 2012, they were discussing about that, uh, what makes them they are so happy and they are playing the card and then you link with the castle that neuronal system and then everything uh, that they connected and we are in a good shape to perform anything. So reason being is that showing this slide that we have to preserve the nature, we have to learn from the nature and they are the best teacher for us and they also they sacrifice their life for us to, to do the research and to move forward. So keeping this one, I took a story from the one of the movie and she was one of the best teacher I was known to do the teaching. And then finally, uh, I'm, I'm sure that many of you have seen this movie like Alice is still that we talk about. What was happening at the, with this professor when she was teaching? Most of the time, she will not recognize either she will feel something, she start teaching mathematics, she will disappear, she will start teaching something else. So this was a very inherent problem and family slowly and slowly they discarded us. They, they were thinking that something wrong with this Alice and she is not able to really communicate either to attach with us. So I'm looking at this picture and um, uh, by looking that, that she is so healthy and everything is very nice. But whenever they were giving some tasks, something was wrong. So if, if we connect with this one, a vibrant, accomplished college professor disappears in front of her friends, family, herself, and turn out to be that she was a really a, a severe patient of Alzheimer and slowly destroys her mind. So uh, putting this movie, either putting this novel that was written by at that time and, and then they, they realized as a film by Richard Glazer that uh, they were talking about that some person who is very healthy, doing very good, but when it comes to perform a task, either to do a stimuli, as she was always lost. And that was the reason that such a wonderful professor, and she was not having a space in friends, in family, and herself as a as an Alzheimer person. So it makes us that being a scientist, either being a social scientist, either being a uh, teacher from any domain, uh, what could have gone wrong and where we can really, uh, you know, uh, interfere, either really we participate to, to, to decode it and to find out a solution for such kind of uh, malady, either such, such kind of disease that we talk about. And that doesn't go still only this place. When she visited the doctor and doctor told that your entire family has to go for medical screening, it's not only you. Then she got more worried and then she narrated entire story that you guys must watch this movie to her daughter. And she told that what the hell you have been talking that uh, I'm suffering from some disease. And finally they went to visit the doctor, all of them. And that turns out to be that it was a really genetic problem that all mem members of the family, they will suffer from Alzheimer. So he here it comes out that a kind of uh, a screening system, a kind of uh, system should be very robust that anything goes wrong to anyone working in any domain, we should be very, very curious and very cautious and we should give our 100% to, to see that that person is taken care. So what was the story behind is this, that we have the brain. We have the distribution of all the, the design that we were talking about, the Nobel laureate artist turns to be Nobel Prize winner in physiology and medicine. Is the electrical circuit of the brain. If something is broken somewhere, like the line he has drawn, and that line is still today, uh, most of the people in geology, botany, uh, in chemistry, in neuroscience, they teach this diagram that we talk about. The question was that, uh, where it is broken and how it is broken and what is coming out on this one. Here, uh, chemists, they try to see that, can we find a solution? Biochemistry, the title they, that you were talking about that, why biological system is not performing the way it has to perform. Then question comes that, then, then certainly some chemical locha is there, either some chemical disturbance has taken place. And to find out this chemical disturbance, there are many ways that we have to do this. And when it has to be done, how it has to be done, what should be the pathway, at what time we should interfere is very important. Reason being is that whenever we try to, to see that some critical point to find out that some problem has taken and look at this diagram that I'm talking about that any neurotransmitter fluctuation takes place in the case of Alice that we are talking about. Means already some neuronal 
uh, architect has started changing. Neurotransmitter is started behaving either upregulated or the downregulated. It doesn't happen when you are 50 years old. It happens when you are very young also. Because we we introduce many type of insult, either we smoke, either we drink, either we do any kind of uh, traumatic brain injury. You talk about either some type of insult has taken place, and that we never came to know. Only when we came to know that the the disease manifest, and then we are in a in a severe problem. Say, so look at these two diseases. Either you detect as early as possible, either you detect when it's very severe, and that is not the solution that uh, being in science, in natural science, we should work. So here is a message to everyone working in any domain of natural sciences, either from biochemistry, chemistry, geography, geology, history, any, because we have to see the behavioral study. We have to see many, many parameters to say that my friends, why he behaves like that. So the question come that we have to really design a robust system to, to find out that if someone is not able to perform this task, it means that which molecule has changed, which polyamino acid has destroyed, and which type of metal ions are fluctuating. Either you can really classify it as a neurotransmitter, that two types that we have got, uh, either uh, 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 excitatory or the inhibitory that we talk about. But then question comes being in a chemistry that what to synthesize, what to build, to see that non-invasively that this person is suffering from uh, a type of disease which is very deadly, and then uh, we are being really ignored in the society. So we try to uh, develop a stimuli. We have the monkey model. Then we try to give a uh, task on the computer. They perform it. When they perform right way, they get the fruit juice. They don't perform in the right way. They get nothing to drink. So then they they motivate them motivate themselves because they are getting incentive. When they get incentive, then try to recognize the target in a nice way. And the similar way when you are teaching, uh, students are not performing very well, uh, is suggestion that you should try to see that what type of incentive, what type of motivational, either motivation that you can provide. So he is a person who does the correct things in a correct manner, in a correct time scale, rather it is too late. So uh, look at this one, it's not something that uh, big, um, something that we, 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 it cannot be decoded either is uh, we can say that is a very complex chemistry, biochemistry and the social sciences. It's just starting from one of the amino acids that we talked about, tyrosine, and then you make all this neurotransmitter. Either you talk about norepinephrine, you talk about dopamine, and then you talk about epinephrine. In between all the chemical process takes place. And then we have to see, we have to find out a mechanism at which stage of this entire process of uh, synthesis of any neurotransmitter, we can come in the picture to see that this basal ganglion, either this uh, type of ventricles, they are completely uh, you know, uh, open. Look at this one, this is structure that here is that ventricles are in a different size, then it gets enlarged when we say that mild Alzheimer disease, and then look at the last one where we say about the severe Alzheimer disease. So this type of images you have to get only one way do, when you do the postmortem. When you do the postmaster postmortem, either you have to do a very good sequence to see in MRI today that that we have got the system to say that your ventricle is really, really widened and neurotransmitters, they are leaking out of this and they are not intact and they are performing the way they have they, they have to perform. So you see that, that we try to take the tyrosine, we take the dopamine, we try to level it and after leveling, we try to see that what type of changes takes place. So we, we try to do a lot of chemistry in this one. I will not go in the complete detail, but if any anyone has question, certainly I will be very happy to answer it. So what we do is that we take some analogs of the uh, uh, tyrosine. It mimics that one in such a way that its biological half-life is very, very strong. Then the chemistry done in such a way that you can put the fluorine, either you can put the uh, uh, um, silicon in such a way in the both type of nucleide, we talk about either unstable radionucleides, either stable normal nucleide that we get the natural nucleides. And then we are able to see in a nice way. So a lot of synthesis that we do it. And after synthesis, you can see that we do the modelization. We try to see that you are able to 
see that it is binding to the receptor that receptor has to to be seen and you can see that very nice 3d picture in tomography that the compound you have synthesized it goes to the ventricle and vessel ganglia and if there is any problem in this one then certainly you can interfere either you can see that what type of management can be done for interference either to put the drugs that is required so this is the one example and then finally it get translated to the human application where the person is normal either a person is suffering from parkinson disease either is suffering from the alzheimer disease so look at in my right hand side where i am putting the crusher here this is the basal ganglia that we talk about like kidney that we see either beans that we talk about if there is any damage either any change as early as you can as you can see that in this scenario where is unhealthy that it means this is broken this not enough neurotransmitter is being produced similar wise you can see in the entire panel that how is the normal parkinson and then you compare up the many types of the tracer that we design at our center to to see it so if you see the story that it starts from that i am happy i am suffering from something and then intervention of a chemist either the biologist either the social scientist come together and then finally we come to a conclusion that this person can be diagnosed and treated which is the very important for all of us so uh, when we talk about this portion then we talk about the another portion that we we are very rich in biodiversity ecosystem is very good provides very nice services if there is any perturbance in this ecosystem then we lose so how to really maintain this ecosystem so our cultural our behavioral our social scientist our natural scientist uh science from the different branches they come together and then certainly we see that we maintain maintain the ecosystem what i would like to take here that uh the the life and biodiversity is so important that we can extract many thing out of it and if we miss somewhere then certainly we are going to play with the nature and that it playing is the nature means that we have a different type of uh, outbreak either disease that we talk about the best example that you guys have seen in this pandemic that uh, the break of outbreak of this covid 19 virus we talk about so you look at the bat we look at the uh, fish you look at the animal you look at the mosquito they are friendly but at the same time also we have to see that what we have been destroying what we have been communicating so in this i took a one one example of this one that if you want to really uh, see that our ancient life is maintained to recapitulate it either some lesson has to be learned that the species are going to extinct where any uh, bad communication is coming is destroyed in the beginning before it reaches to you so we have lost many many flora many many species that otherwise this communication could not have taken it could have been destroyed very nicely curing a cancer it means that if you are not able to cure a cancer of a person which is very important to this country if i give one example of our defense minister parikar if he died uh, of cancer it means that we were not really prepared either we are not able to really protect our citizen from any type of attack that we talk about the cancer and the pandemic so we have to develop the marker we have to develop a very strong social uh, networking to do the therapy in a best way and that is very important for any habitat to 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 to, to survive and to really explore which is the uh, cracks of anything that we talk about in future research if you read this paper of uh, welter and we uh, that published sometime back in 2015 you will get that how if we play with the nature and then finally it becomes the pandemic that's the very important for us this slide i took very specifically for all of us to synthesize in the lab this uh, type of compound it takes years and years in multi multi step if we have got very nice fauna and flora it takes just one thing that putting two things together and you get a beautiful compound which is applicable for many things so taking from the nature where you you say that biosynthesis is taking place who does this biosynthesis it it is either done by animal kingdom kingdom either plant kingdom and that becomes the resource for us to 
to use it for different application. And you can see that how nicely they have introduced the lipid, how nicely they have converted one of the serine to a uh, dihydrospinosine compound that we talk about, how lysis takes place and you convert to the one of the substituted amine in, in such a nice way, even such a systematically defined uh, chemical pathway in the laboratory, it will be very difficult what nature does. So we have to, to be very smart that how we can, we can protect this nature. I take one example in this one, one case studies, we talk about this cholecystokine receptor. And this is available in plant kingdom. It is available in animal, animal kingdom. And this is the uh, one of the peptide, one of the protein that we talk about, they are very important for human. Uh, either you talk about the brain tumor, either you talk about the prostate cancer. If this is not in the nature, then certainly you cannot derive the medicine. Either you cannot learn that how to, to design these molecules for the clinical application. So what we have taken the lead from this one that we do a lot of uh, you know, uh, heat and trials in this one to isolate it, from where to isolate it, how to characterize it, to know that which amino acids are most important biologically and that you have to plug and play it very importantly. Just look at this one, this plant extract that we talk about, that the case studies I have taken from aspergillus and from where you take this aspergillus, you extract this aspergillus and this Aspergillus that is such a beautiful compound. Looking at the structure, it shows like tryptophan. You have got glycine. You have got some of the phenylalanine. You have got some imidazole ring, and you break it. Once you break it, you can synthesize such nicely. And this compound is being used for many, many applications uh, for human health. But what I want to say is that we always try to play with the nature. Look at this one, uh, such a beautiful uh, species that we have got and then is very good for many, many things that whosoever is, uh, you know, they eat seafood, either they preserve it, either they, they take many kinds of things. What we do is that we always wanted to, to, uh, to know, increase the cultivation of all these things by doing unnatural way, either by introducing some of the toxin, which is not very important, and that is very dangerous for us. So you look at that wild salmon, if you talk about where we have all this toxin that is very less in concentration, like we talk about 4.8. But when you do the farming of this one, so we, we introduce a lot of toxic material. We, we wanted to, to have the very high yield of this one, a very weight that we can get it. So all this by doing, by doing the farming of this uh, fishes, you can see that you have introduced almost nine times of toxin in any scenario that we talk about, and which is very dangerous for us. But the, you, you just look at this one, that that what we synthesize in the lab, the peptide that we are talking about, you were able to get from aspergillus and you were able to get from the fishes. And then you see the concentration of these and the binding constant of all this that we are working on this one. So it's very important for us that how we preserve the nature, how we get this peptide from the nature that is very important for clinical application. So not only this, that we have to destroy that many, many fauna and flora, but it's very easy to extract from this one. But at the same time, you cannot destroy it. So uh, one of our colleagues from a medical center of biotechnology, we work together and we try to see that this compound is also known in the literature by many companies. Then we, we came out that we can synthesize this molecule. We can evaluate this molecule. And very nicely, we can demonstrate that this moiety can be very useful. These compounds are very useful for clinical application that we were getting from natural resources. So what we do is that nature gives us something. From nature, we derive the molecule which is essential for us. And then we try to mimic it and to synthesize and to prove the efficacy that whatever that we had got in the nature is equally either better, either some compromised biological activity that we get it. So look at this one, very nicely synthesized. You look at the binding constant, so it's very nice, 0.63 nanomolar concentration. Half-life is almost 100 fold. It means if I'm injecting to any human being, either any scenario, it can reach to the target, um, even um, uh, if, if you have very longer biological half-life, it is not destroyed, it is not killed, it is not digested by enzyme, and then you can do many more chemistry to, to see it by uh, using different type of non-invasive imaging. Look at this one. So we started from aspergillus. We started from the nature. We started from uh, 
uh, fish that we talk about salmon and we are able to build a molecule which is today utilized to uh, do a kind of imaging which is very important for the medullary thyroid carcinoma i took this slide reason being that in institute there are many thyroid cases comes is even it is very useful for a small cell lung cancer and the most important that we talk about the gastrointestinal tumor so it's a beautiful translation from taking the lead from nature and then to to translate that how you can build this molecule can be used for the clinical application. So this is the one example I took it. Since uh, yesterday I was discussing with Malika, she told me that the people from the geology group will be there also. Look at this one, such a beautiful. The first time this color was isolated from geologist and they, they got this compound and you can see the painting on the, my right hand side that they used to do for the painting is none less than uh, this is called petroporphyrins. And this porphyrins, everyone knows that in our uh, uh, bioinorganic chemistry that we must be teaching uh, to everyone. This porphyrins, iron, and then it binds with oxygen for the transport at the function of this different uh, electropotential that we talk about. Such a nice protoheme that we say etiopropyrin nucleus and he, nature does in such a way that if you look at that you can you can do the lipidization that can cross the blood brain barrier for different application you can enrich with the nutrients minerals everything and these molecules if i have to synthesize in the lab it will take years and years and years so all the geologists the group of the geology uh, department if they go and collect something like this that so it's beautiful color they should not really leave it bring something do the extraction and then you can see such a beautiful molecule which is of very high important for photodynamic therapy as well as for the clinical application and this was uh, petroporphyrin was uh, you know um, uh, discovered by the french guy the corwin that uh, in 1960s and that can be found in rock cells and sediments that we talk about i i'm showing this slide is that Again, I took an example from the nature. And by taking the example from nature, we have to build it because we cannot certainly you know, uh, go and keep extracting that will kill the time. So looking at the structure, looking at this one, then we try to see always that if I get something from the nature, I have to characterize it. Characterize in a way that by using different technology, we talk about that uh, we use NMR, we use mass spectrum, we use UVB spectroscopy. So many, many uh, technology, we use it. I have taken this one that even if you get a molecule from the rock, either anywhere, even if it looks so bad in the spectra, there are many ways, many sequence, many contrast, many lanthanide re reagents that you can use and then you can really resolve the peak in such a nice way. So I want to show uh, if you look at the in my left hand side that one of the picture of a where there is a no a splitting pattern and look at the other side where you can see very nice splitting pattern of this spectra and then finally it get translated in human application you can even see each neurons each networking that was drawn by the casual at that time. And then you can do the anisotropy of this one that is called friction anisotropy and you can make the all a tracking of the fiber in which direction it is going it is broken it is not broken so then how it is possible to see that such a spectra which was not beautiful we are able to see in such a nice way then the spectra that we are getting in human it was not so beautiful now we can see such beautifully beautiful spectra and that is much more informative that we talk about so look at this what we do is that everybody must be teaching in your classroom that you have got the gadolinium is such a beautiful element in periodic table, highly paramagnetic, having a excellent property to change the coordination number and you can design very nicely. But problem with this one is that it's very toxic in nature. So to do avoid the toxicity, what we do is that we design some chelators. The chelators bind it very strongly under physiological condition. So it doesn't metal is not leaked out. And that is the important for doing any kind of system that you want to develop that can get translated. They can uh, be used for some application that you have thought about. But uh, just taking the lead again from the nature that you look at the crab. Crab is a system that holds very strongly the object, but at the same time, they have got the sensor. And that senses that uh, what I have to sense in which scenario, and then accordingly, I can change my coordination number 
either I can change my property to become smart and then uh, to give the information which is required from medical point of view. So this is the designing of molecule, taking the lid from the crab. And then finally, we are able to really see all this, you know, spectroscopy to inversion recovery to see that at what time scale it is working. It is working in the millisecond time scale, either it is working at a second scale time, uh, which is very important because any changes takes a fraction of millisecond and very instantaneous, even you cannot determine the kinetics of the changes that takes place because today I'm looking at Ritu, after a few seconds, I'm looking at fraction of second at Aniska. So you see the changes in my brain that how it takes place. And for that, you have to design the molecule, which is really robust at the different pH and then incremental changes you can observe. At the same time, you can change the contrast in the fraction of millisecond. So you can say that if any change takes place, I'm able to track it, I'm able to see it. And that's why you can see today that whatever uh, we get from the nature and MRI is being done, you can see the pre-dose, we are not able to see many things, but when you give this contrast, you are able to see many, many a small lesion that we, we say always a metastatic lesion, either micrometastatic lesion, and then you are able to, to plan the treatment very, very nicely, very strongly, uh, keeping in view that this can be very useful that we want to work with the system. Another example, I took it from the nature where many zoology people, they go at different places. You do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, dissection of the frog and uh, many type of uh, feces, scoliodon and anything. What you do is just you throw it, either you, uh, after doing the surgery, either you don't preserve, either you throw it. It's such a important message here for everyone that uh, you look at the skin of this uh, uh, frog that is called bovina bovina. And this bovina is not very, you know, uh, unique. Uh, it, it is found everywhere, but in India also. But it, 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 it's a screen, you just look at the skin that you have got many peptides. And these peptides are so important that you can treat the prostate and brain tumor. So we took the lead from this one and getting some isolation of, from the skin of this frog that is uh, Mombina, Mombino that we talk about. And then you just design it because being a chemist, once you get the structure, you do the reverse chemical engineering. And then after that, you design the molecule. And after designing, you do all the parameter which is required to say that it is like a natural ligand that body produces, either human produces, either someone by just changing some of the activity that we always talk about, the biological activity, either biological half-life. It means that it is not going to change its conformation, is not going to change its uh, configuration, and it is also not digested by the peptide, the either enzyme that we talk about. And then we design many molecules that I'm not going to talk about more in this. And you can see that once you design at the real time scale, you can graph the tumor, you can see it. And then once it is really um, uh, approved, either validated in the preclinical model, finally you can move uh, by doing the imaging for different type of tumor where these receptors are overexpressed. You talk about pituitary, you talk about medullary lung, uh, dodumen, ovarian, anything you talk about mid gut and these peptides are overexpressed. And that's why you design the peptide. I can show you in the this slide that such a beautifully nicely picture you can obtain with this one that in your left hand side, whatever the red and uh, yellow that you are seeing is the tumor. When you do the treatment, the amount of uh, the spots and the yellow color almost disappearing. It means that first to diagnose and the, to treat it and that you get the lead from the nature. Which, what a beautiful system that you can design and is being practiced in the clinic today. Um, last part of my discussion is that um, most of the time we use the copper and then our uh, ancestors, they were using it quite often, but we had lost somewhere that we, we switched over to the all plastic and polymer because it was very easy to carry, but easy to carry, but also after effects that was very also very bad to carry. So that's the thing that why they were using this one. Um, it was a logic behind that, why copper was used at that time. You just look at this, that the, the beauty of the copper, you talk about any type of disease that today occurs, even that being exploited so nicely in COVID-19 that they make many masks, many compounds that can be used uh, and to protect with this uh, copper. But being in a chemistry, either being in a, a science subject, being in natural science, uh, if anybody says any story, 
we have to really verify we have to see that and after seeing we can come to a conclusion that whatever ancestor uh, that they were saying is true and then it works the way it has to work so look at this i took just a simple electronic configuration of copper and that also plays very important role in the life because here it comes about social science if you look at the copper 29 we always talk about 4s2 3d9 and i say that okay my neighbor is happy i'm not happy it is doesn't go very well so i try to see that i'm happy my neighbor is also happy and that copper teaches us in a very nice way so you can see that i'm half filled one is completely filled and both are happy and remember this is the exception in the periodic table you teaching every day to your student but what happens in this one is that you take all this copper you get from wherever in which farm and how it works to to help uh, many things that we we are uh, working on this one uh, just i take a call because dg is calling good afternoon sir Sir, वो दो बजे आएंगे अभी हम लोग आपको लेने आ जाएंगे सर थोड़ी देर में and then uh, after that we'll have a small discussion and deliberation and then uh, this one will be presented. Do you have to facilitate or? Uh, 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 it will be one hour maximum sir from two fifteen to three fifteen sir. Sir, 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 sir. Ah, sir, sir, sir. I will come to take you, sir. Sir, 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 sir. I'm sorry, I had to take a call from my headquarters. So just look at such a beautiful. Even you look at the copper; it looks so beautiful. If you maintain, you eat food. You eat different type of fruits. You use the bracelet. You are using the mug, jug, and any type of utensil that you have been using to enrich it. So here it comes the chemistry that in which form you had to consume it is in copper one, either copper two. They, they play very important and is a balance in this one. So if I, you talk about copper one in mono amino oxidase, where it is very important in the brain to work about this one. The copper two is basically uh, some of the protein they bind it. They again change in the copper one and they become very active. So by keeping this balance, you look at the periodic table. When you look at the periodic table, always you have been teaching the copper sixty three, either copper sixty, whatever the stable nuclei that we talk about. But look at the copper. We have got more than. Hundred isotopes and each isotopes are so beautiful. They can be used for different application. Copper sixty seven for therapy, copper sixty four for therapy and diagnostic, and likewise you have many many coppers. It means that whenever that we are copper utensil that we were having, that is very important that it it is there. But in what amount it is there, it was not known to many of us. But now. is everything has been really decoded if we know that what is the percentage of by isotopic distribution that we have got many technology to verify it and then when we verified it it's also very important to know that how copper is taken inside the body you look at this the binding of the copper and there where you look at the methionine is holding on of the protein and that protein comes out of the one of the receptor that we call clt1 receptor and cl2 two receptor and these are the copper transporter where they bind very nicely copper one and engulf inside and then finally it goes there but being a chemist we don't believe totally that if we take something and we send it it will be reaching in the same manner here we try to see that we design the molecule which binds very strongly mimics the nature that we have got but binding constant and stability is very high and that's why uh, we always try to see that we have to introduce some histamine in that we have to introduce some lysine in this one and also to make a kind of semi cycle structure which binds very strongly and then you can have many many uh, structure out of this that can be used for holding the copper very very strongly under physiological condition can be delivered for human application and that's why very recently we published the paper on this one that you load the copper do the pre clinical and then after pre clinical loading on this one certainly you can uh, visualize in a human application with this you can see such a, a starting point from the copper and they were saying that the copper it was being used uh, for many many uh, type of treatment and you can see that uh, the you can you can visualize it 
and you can treat with the copper uh, and that is the beauty of the copper that's why our ancestors they used to to ha to have many things in copper either bracelet either chain either having the mug either drinking putting the water to get the cons different isotope and these isot isotopes are very useful for different application with this uh, we have to be all biodiversity being the scientists from different domain being natural scientists social scientists we have to work together to maintain the ecosystem to get the information from ecosystem and then finally we can develop that everybody lives healthy happy and enjoy their life thank you very much for your kind attention and now it's open for your discussion